Hello, everyone. Susan Gerpik here from Psychics Explained, the YouTube channel that is seeking to understand and to explore and to evaluate and to research and get into the details of mediumship readings. I have um, a new psychic for you, New Grief Vampire. This is the second video I've done on this psychic. And his name is John Benner, B-E-N-N-E-R. I probably mispronounced it a couple times already. He's a YouTube, uh, not YouTube, he's a Facebook Live medium. I don't know if he appears on TikTok and Instagram, but he, I know he's been appearing on uh, Facebook Live for a long time. I have friends that have been working on understanding and evaluating and dealing with this man for a very long time. I understand he's very unpleasant to deal with, and I'm sure he will be extremely upset that my eye has turned to him. Um, he has um, blocked me, which is always uh, when I had never even written about him or anything. I've done nothing, and he had already blocked me, which makes me wonder why. I need to be blocked, and that's just going to make me get more interested in the person. I do not have to have, I mean, blocking me isn't going to keep me from getting to your things or or posting. I mean, it's just silly, okay? So, John, not a good move. I went to, uh, so this is the second. I've started a playlist on my YouTube channel, the YouTube channel you're watching this on right now. So if you want to find more of his readings or the one that I have just previously done um, where he read Kathleen, um, you know, they're, they're going to be here in this playlist and any others I do in the future, they'll also be in the playlist. So give them a, a look. I am a firm believer that we need to evaluate multiple readings from the same psychic. It's nice if they're on the same day because then you get a bigger feel for what's going on. But this is a different day. It's only a couple of days off. And I find that, uh, as I said, we need to do a lot of different in a row kind of uh, watching the readings to really understand their style um, and so on. Now, this man is a very quiet speaker and he's very slow about the reading. It's nothing like what you are probably typically used to. Um, the one I'm going to show you right now, I have not watched. I've seen some screenshots of it and I've seen um, some pretty difficult screenshots. So if violent death is something that you're not okay with, uh, reading or hearing about or anything like that this might not be the video for you i don't know how long this reading goes for if it's two or three minutes or if it's 10 or 15 minutes but i'm going to try to let it play out as long as i can i'm not going to be cutting it into little chunks because it just breaks up the the flow of the reading and what i want you to understand and i'm trying to understand myself is how this is so powerful to people going through these readings. And I've written an article for Skeptical Inquirer. It came out January 17th. I'll put it in the uh, uh, description of this video. It's called Mediumship. I still have a lot to learn. In that article, I'm really exploring what I've learned um, mostly since I started this channel. I mean, I've been following psychic mediums for years, doing stings and um, really getting into the weeds with them. But this last year, 2023, March 23 till now, I'm recording this in January 2024, I'm really trying to understand why is it that these three groups of people, the normals, those people who watch the shows on TV, who think that mediumship is like, ah, it's a good laugh, you know, it's entertainment, everybody comes out of this okay, and it's fun, and, you know, they discover hidden bodies and self crimes and yeah, whatever, who cares? Nobody really takes it seriously group. That's the normals. And then the skeptic group, which can be very mean spirit spirited and, um, and think that the people who are getting the readings aren't necessarily um, smart and are falling for a ruse and nobody would ever fall for this. Not all skeptics. I want to point that out. 
uh, awful lot of skeptics are compassionate human beings who see this uh, mediumship as what it is, which is people preying on vulnerable people who are not stupid. They just happen to be either in a place where they're vulnerable and not making great judgments and seeing um, the con like we would see. And or they are raised into this culture that has, they've never thought to challenge mediumship. It's never dawned on them that somebody out there might not, might not be able to, I mean, somebody out there, they believe somebody out there can definitely communicate with the dead. Maybe not everyone that says that they can. I also, um, I also think that there is a huge community of people out there who are being preyed on, mostly women um, who are told they're mediums and they're offered lessons by these other mediums. And it's kind of like a, you know, they're selling them on, on lessons and workshops and books and, and, and so on. So I think that there's a whole community of people out there who are being preyed upon. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch this video. Like I said, we'll go as long as we can. It's a Facebook Live, and I have the comments set so they're at real-time comments. So as the video is progressing, you'll see the comments come through. And so you're going to look at the right-hand side of the screen to see the comments. I will try to keep scrolling through to make sure that it kind of throws uh, stays up with the flow of what he's saying. And post production, I'm going to go back and I'm going to I'm going to fix the audio. On the last video I did, um, my audio I think is normal. His audio was I had to boost it to three hundred percent of what it normally was so that you could hear him. So hopefully in the last video. You guys could hear him okay. I'm going to probably have to do the same thing with his video um, because he's very quiet. So please do not look up the woman who is being uh, read. Her name is going to be on the screen. Uh, these people, just leave them alone. I, I'm not blocking it or, or blurring it out because this is a public reading that um, anybody with a Facebook account could have read. Um, watched them and and clicked on the profiles. I do not believe that Brenner Benner Benner is hot reading, which is something that would be very easy to do if you were to click on their their um, profiles, which are right there in front of him. I do not think so. I think this is all completely cold reading, a totally different style than others um, mediums that you normally see. Okay, for he does have somebody in the chat that has a will often post um, how much it costs to get these readings they're eight dollars for a normal reading i guess just of your personality it's eleven dollars for a reading that's energy whatever that means <laughs> and if you want to talk to a dead loved one twenty two dollars and the more you donate the more in depth he will go with the reading so i guess for thirty dollars maybe you can talk to the family pet too um, you're going to also notice, I know I'm being flippant, you also will notice in the chat, in the time, the limited time we're going to have it on the screen, that people are very friendly to each other. There's a lot of chit-chatting with the other people who are jumping into the live. This is not a one-off thing for these people. They uh, have found a community here. They have found um, friendship, possibly with each other and they see John as like a minor celebrity in their community. And so they're, you know, they were be, you know, saying things to him uh, very friendly and talking to each other and uh, very community oriented. And this is common from what I understand in all paranormal communities where people have found their people per se, like the UFO community or the flat earth community or the, um, moon hoax community, well, the moon landing hoax people, well, I, though I'm sure there's people out there who think the moon is a hoax, um, people who believe in all kinds of medical whatnots that aren't real. The community is really holds people in. They, they found their people and they're uncomfortable challenging people and they're uncomfortable saying, 
what to people like maybe us watching this would say, hey, the emperor has no clothes on. They're not likely to go in and say, say anything. They're just going to keep their head down and praise the person that they've invested so many hours watching. So I hope you guys, um, I'm not going to say enjoy this because it's going to be painful. Um, but um, if you would please leave me your comments. I'm really interested in what you think. And uh, like, share, uh, subscribe, hit the uh, bell that goes ding. Well, actually, I don't think it really goes ding. But if you, so we, you know when I'm uploading a new video, I have a huge queue of things I want to do. Um, the John Benner videos, um, hopefully the person who's been asking me to do videos on this man will keep giving me more of the best, the best of his so we can evaluate that. Let's see. If you like it, please let me know. If it's something that doesn't interest you, you know, I'd like to know and I'd like to know why. Okay. So look at the comments. Um, I They're going to be in the lower right-hand side. They're going to come up in real time. And um, no looking up the people who are on this screen and contacting them. Um, and do not... Uh, no ad hominem attacks on John himself. We're all our own unique people. And possibly if he is speaking to the dead, he needs to be comfortable and and the things he does might be what he needs to do to be a medium. So um, let's not belittle people for their appearance or how they sound or what they eat or anything like that. Let's Let's concentrate on on what he says and what he's doing, right? That's that's where I'd like to stay. And in the description underneath, I will have um, some links. So I'm going to turn a fresh sheet of paper. I like paper and pencils. I bet you guys, but I really do. I'm, I'm a paper pencil kind of gal. Even though I got computers coming out of my ears over here. But let's, let's go through. Leave me some of your um, comments as we go. And we'll evaluate this when we're done. All right? Okay. Here he is. Comments will be down here. I think, and you can see up here is where the uh, append um, how much it costs for sessions to, to give him a PayPal. I will put links to all these other things in the description underneath. Ah, there we go, finally. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go, and now we're back. Okay, so um, Lorene is up next for a reading. Ah, come on, stop doing that. Stop, stop, there we go. Loreen, how can I help you tonight? Mm-hmm. We're going to be looking for Evelyn's reading, y'all. I got it, Evelyn. Thank you very much. Okay, he's saying he just got Evelyn's money. And I guess Jackie Martinez is uh, his, one of his assistants. The list is open. If you'd like a reading, make a payment and you will be put on the list. And the list is on a three month love life. Okay. A Facebook page that I have. With, uh, I'll put in the description. The angels, yes. please give Lorene a quick concise message through the stack of cards. But our love life over the next three months, February, March, April, and I thank you. This is fascinating. Those are well-worn cards. All right. Love life. 
Well, look at this. I see next month in February, I see you, I see the magic in your life. I see that you're in your love life. That is, I'm seeing that whatever you need to be a success will manifest into your love life. And then in the following month in March, carrying on over there, I see a lot of rewards coming in your love life. So a lot of good things happening there. I feel a lot of, uh, I feel a lot of your priorities being successfully balanced and everything. And then when we go into, um, um, April, I feel that you're going to be releasing some situations or people that no longer serve you in your love life. And that you'll be seeing the humor in very difficult situations and whatnot. Did you have any other questions? Okay, well, you're very welcome, Maureen. Very welcome. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Okay, up next we have... Up next we have Evelyn. Okay, this is the one we want to listen to, people. I should have a cat. No, I'm a dog person. I'm not a cat person. Josh, he took his own life. Oh, boys, that's not good. Okay, let's see. All right. That's not good. Let's try to get Josh in here. I always like looking at the cups. Why do they do that? I see that Josh is a pretty happy guy. He's a pretty joyous type of guy. Um, it's like he just walked in with a big smile on his face and just wants to shake my hand. Um, he's looking out the window just like looks out the window. So he also like to explore his environment. It looks like he's the type that kind of just looks around, exploring his environment around him. I just feel he was very happy, very happy type of guy. We stayed pretty happy. Um, He says hi to you, Evelyn. He's saying hi to you. He seems, he just seems very upbeat and full of energy. Um, 
and he took his own life. That's weird. Um, I don't know. He just seems very happy and upbeat. Um, that's how he seems to me anyway. and pick up other things about him so we can clarify that it's him or not. He's saying he didn't take his life. So do you know that for sure? Hmm. Because when I asked him, I asked him, did you take your own, did you take your life? Did you commit suicide? He says no. He didn't do that. You found his body, okay. I'm feeling that there is something else that happened there. Maybe he's trying to say that he was not. Oh, wait, let me ask him. No, it wasn't Paul Play. I get a feeling that someone pushed him to it against his will. It's not something that he wanted to do. Hmm. get some messages from him. He's not really saying much, though. He keeps repeatedly saying he didn't take his life. That's what he keeps repeating. He keeps saying that. I did not do it. I did not do it, is what he says. Hmm. Why is he telling me that he didn't do it then? Were you there when he did it? It'd be very possible that this isn't Josh. Um, I have a feeling that someone pushed him into doing this against his will. something about cars with him too like maybe he was into cars or like working on them i'm trying to get a little more clarification to make sure that this is him i feel that he was a bit lazy <laughs> i just keep feeling that with him um 
pull on his head, gun on his lap. Someone else did it. I feel something with cars with him. Like he was into cars or like, like just really into cars. I'm trying to get more clarity from him so we can make sure this is really Josh. He saw me, he was kind of a mama's boy a bit. Does that sound like Josh? Wanna make sure. Hello, Deanna, how you doing? Neighbor was in the car as well. That's not Josh. We're not speaking of his neighbor. But his neighbor was in the cars. Um, was Josh a bit lazy? Was he a lazy guy? I was feeling that about him too. I don't feel him being a hard worker or anything. And I'm sorry that you had to find your find him like that. That's that must have been very rough. He left a note. So we can only assume that he did it, but nobody actually saw him write the note or do anything. Nobody saw any, nobody actually witnessed this. Hmm. can't believe it either. Hmm. Did he seem like a pretty happy guy when he was when he was around you and stuff? Like he was just happy and well mannered. Um, like greeting people who who wasn't shy at all. Very sociable. Um, He was happy. That's why I don't get it. Uh, well, he didn't do it. He didn't. He didn't kill himself. Somebody did this to him. It's a setup. That's what he keeps telling me. That's too bad. I'm trying to see if I can get an image of who might have done this. I feel it was another guy, dark hair. Oh boy, I'm bad at this, but bear with me. Dark, short hair. He's telling me it, it, it was a guy that he really did not like very much. So it wasn't really, it wasn't like a good friend of his or anything. It was somebody he really did not like. Um, I see the, I see the person being uh, somewhat tall, slender, dark hair. Oh God, was that actor? Like, he looks like an actor. Um, like, I want to say Bob Saget, but I don't know. I'm not saying Bob Saget did this. I'm just saying he kind of looked that way. Um, or maybe like, what's that guy in this, that, the 70s show, what's his name? Oh, I gotta look it up. Let me see. Remember that actor's there. He kind of looks like him. He was, oh God, what? Oh my God. Uh, what's his name? It's right here. Eric Foreman. He looks like Eric Foreman a little bit. From 
that 70s show, so Topher Grace. Is that his name? Yeah. I feel a yes on that, Evelyn. I feel a yes on it. That's been stressing you? Okay. I'm taking gun safety course, huh? Okay. I think all he really wanted to tell you is that he really did not do anything to himself. He didn't do any harm to himself is what he wanted to tell you. That he did not do this. He wants you to tell his, his daughter that he loves her very much. He's in a very safe, he's in a very good place now. And he wants his daughter to know that he did not take his life. Did you have any other questions over there?
you're very welcome. Wow. Wow, that was something else. Wow. Were you guys paying attention? Oh my gosh. We will be doing many more videos on John Benner. I'll have somebody uh, just pick the best and uh, send them my way and we'll we'll do more of these. If, please let me know if you found that interesting because I found that breathtaking. He's so slow about his responses. It's an interesting style. It's, it's far different than even Tyler Henry, who is very big on the pauses. And because he's he's got people that are um, in the chat, it makes it just a different kind of effect. We only hear him and his voice. It's really interesting listening to. And I did. I found myself several times waiting for her response and almost holding my breath. Wow. I made a lot of notes. Did you guys make notes too? Because I made a lot of notes. Uh, first off, we started, I, I started the video too soon. I started it whenever he was saying he got Evelyn's money. And that's interesting too, because he got in Evelyn's money. He says, okay, thank you, Evelyn, for getting your money. You're on the list. Then he does like two or three minutes for somebody who wants to know about her love life. And he consults the tarot cards and tells her to, next to nothing, a bunch of generic stuff. Goodbye. Uh, seven dollars or whatever it was for the reading for the personal reading like that that's what he wants to tell you that you will be missing seven dollars out of your paypal account today all right and then immediately goes to evelyn so there isn't very many people in the in the queue because it was maybe maybe five minutes from the time she gave her money till the time she got her reading i don't know if that's typical because this is only the second time I've watched his videos. I don't know if it's easy to get a reading. There are a lot of people in the chat. Um, it says that this video has been, been eyeballed 219 times. So I don't know, maybe there's 30 people in this chat, something like that. So um, he, he appears to be on live a lot. All right. All right. So she tells people, she tells John, Josh killed himself. He took his own life. She tells him that. Nothing else. Um, and that she sent Amanda, that's his assistant, a photo or some photos. So I don't know if what she got were a bunch of smiling photos of a man who looks like he would be working on cars or not, because we don't know what the pictures look like. But that's what uh, John got. So I would assume he's, if she had sent pictures saying uh, of a man who's scowling and he's fishing, or he uh, has a military uniform on, or he's laying in bed or whatever, he would get a different impression of him. I'm only assuming that. I, d I don't know if that's true or not. So under his breath, and I'm going to magnify this audio, but what I, because he's so quiet, um, what I think he says right off the bat is, I don't like looking at the cops or looking up at the cops. So um, if he's channeling this guy, Josh, and there was, and the cops did come to the house after he committed suicide, after she calls, that would be maybe something he'd utter, possibly. Happy guy. He's, uh, likes, he's looking out the window now. He's a happy guy. He explores his environment, a very happy kind of guy. And he says to say hi to you, which is really odd. Hi. Hi. Hey, hi. <laughs> so the only other video I've done of and watched this ben, Benner's readings was of a man who died. And he said that the guy's just wandering around. He likes to look at things. He's wandering around, picking up things and looking at them. So he said that in the other video. And then here in this video, he's saying kind of the same thing. He's looking out the window. He likes to explore his environment and walk around. So I don't know if that's typical of him or not. And as I said in the other uh, video I did, the other one they just recorded earlier today, if he was really a medium and he had given evidential evidence, I mean, like serious evidence, like numbers, dates, names, 
something specific, not like a letter of the alphabet or a number or month, but something very specific. And I'm sure we can all come up with many things like the locker number for his high school uh, locker. I mean, if she would know that um, or his second grade teacher's name or um, his imaginary friend's name or something very specific that would be very private, but not generic. Okay, let's say he gave that information. It is possible to look those up if you're really doing a hot reading that is, you need to get in there. If you guys have not seen Nightmare Alley or read the book, you'd need to do so. Oh my gosh, that shows you the limit somebody will go to to actually get, get the dirt on somebody. Private information nobody else would know in order to get into their bank book and to get uh, uh, influence from somebody. It's a really interesting story. Del Toro just did a video on um, Nightmare Alley recently. So, okay, I digress. I'm saying that everything is find outable. Somebody knows. But if John, in this case, had come up with those very specific things and then added in the, oh, he's looking up at the cops, he's looking out the window, he's wandering around looking at objects in the room. Okay, that would be really storytelling and very, very gripping, but without any kind of details whatsoever and the just the guy's looking out the window and he's wandering around the room, that's not, that's not specific. That just sounds like somebody who's killing time and just saying what he's just talking off the top of his head. That's, that's, I, there's got to be, there's got to be some other word for this besides cold reading. It's got to be like, ice cold reading or something because that's just like nothing okay so he, he's telling the woman who found him found him dead hi all right so she answers how could he be happy then why w-h-y-y-y-y-y she writes and he says well he seems happy he seems very upbeat i don't know he's that's weird he's saying he didn't take his life are you sure he took his life. I don't get why is why is Benner why is he challenging this woman? It would be so much easier to say, yeah, he took his own life. He was depressed. He's sorry about it. He loves you. He's watching over you. I mean, that'd be so much easier. I don't know if he's just free associating, or he really thinks he's in contact with somebody, or he's just bored and wants to really, you know, go for the hits. I don't know. It doesn't matter if John Benner believes believes this stuff or if he's making it up. It doesn't matter. It is coming out of his mouth. He's he's no, it doesn't matter. I don't really care what his motivation is. OK, so she says, I found his body. And Brenner's like, well, I still think it was something else. Okay. And then under his breath, he says, no, I don't think it was foul play. Somebody pushed him to it. It's not something he wanted to do. And then he, under his breath again, he says, I'm getting messages. He's not saying much. He, he keeps saying he didn't do it. And she's, and then he asks this woman again, were you there? I guess, were you there when he shot himself? And then he says, maybe it isn't Josh. I try to get out of it now. <laughs> well, then who are you talking to? If you can't tell, why don't you give us some evidence? What's his last name? How is he related to this woman? Um, what is the color of the chair he was sitting in when he died? What's the name of his dog? I mean, something she could have verified. He's just sitting there going, maybe it's not Josh. Somebody pushed him to it. Okay, so maybe it's the wrong guy. But let me see if it's the right guy. Did he work on cars? Was he into cars? Was he a bit lazy? Wow. I mean, that's Sylvia Brown callous. I mean, you know, she was just the worst. But this guy, wow. He was a bit lazy. And the woman says, I just found his body 
hole in his head, gun in his lap. And Benner says, was he a, a mama's boy a bit? I just think he was really lazy. He wasn't a hard worker. And she, okay, so this is a motivated sitter. Telltale sign. She wants so badly this to be real and so badly to be in contact with Josh that she's willing to make excuses be above and beyond. And she says, well, the neighbor was into cars. The neighbor worked on cars. That's that's a telltale sign of somebody who is trying so hard to make it fit that they're willing to take something that isn't even a play. Cars were on the street. Yes, he owned a car. I mean, no, that's not what he said. Did he work on cars? No, he does not work on cars, Benner. But the neighbor does. And then he's like, well, yeah, something about the neighbors, blah, blah, blah. And he gets really quiet. And she says, he left a note. So, yeah, <laughs> it's not foul play. I don't know why, what he said in the note. Did Why, why didn't, why didn't uh, Benner say what was in the note? That would validate some. If he said, okay, he said in the note. This, 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 and this, you know, something was happening at work. It was very stressful and I was accused of doing something and, or, um, you know, I took money and they're about to find out or uh, somebody was very, very mean at me at work or I can't handle, I was very upset because of the death of my, you know, somebody else. And now I'm just, I, I have to be with them. I don't know, but it, I mean, he could have said something. She's saying, I don't know why he killed himself. He was a, he was a happy guy. So he's saying that he certainly didn't do it. It was a setup, y'all, a setup. Somebody else did it. He's trying to make sense of it. He's like, well, maybe there was, maybe he was pushed into it or maybe it was a setup. What, are you saying that the note was faked and all the scenario was faked? Apparently. So then he goes on to describe the person responsible who was not a friend of his. He didn't like the guy. Okay. Let's put out an alert, everybody. Alert on the news. It is a tall, skinny, or slender, dark haired guy that he didn't like. Let the police know. Let's get investigations now. How about his name? How about that? How about a name? How about a reason? How about an address? How about the guy's phone number? Something. Right? He looked like Eric Foreman, who I have no idea who that is, some actor. He sort of looked like him. That was very helpful, I'm sure. I don't know what he looks like. Okay. So... Let's talk about this before we get to the guns part, all right? So this woman is upset because her husband, I assume, um, has has her has killed himself in a very violent way um suddenly and left a note and I guess didn't give a reason or a very good reason. Normally he's very happy. And she's looking for some answers. Why do you do it? You know, do you have a message from him? Okay. In grief, that does seem to make some sense. But now this woman has to believe that somebody pushed Josh into it, either actually physically doing it and leaving and writing a note in his handwriting or physically or did it purposely by pushing him into it, I don't know, like blackmailing him or something. And now she's going to be wary of a tall, slender, dark haired man that he didn't like. Now, maybe that applies to somebody in Josh's life. So is Evelyn supposed to what? Notify the police or go out and retribution shoot this person who has, she, the medium has now told her has caused her Josh, her beloved Josh to die. 
What if she has the means to do that? What if she feels the desire? She knows exactly who he's talking about because she writes OMG. But maybe maybe she knows who this person is. I don't know. What, what does that mean she's going to do? What is it? Is she going to tell somebody in her family what the medium said? Or just say, you know what? Josh didn't kill himself. So-and-so forced him to do it. Or he did it. And made or this other guy made did the did everything and just faked everything or he pushed him into it i know why because they were had a fight and and they didn't like each other and there was some cars and some ownership problems i don't know but what if she tells the wrong person and they go out and take it out on this guy this slender dark-haired man that didn't like josh i mean the medium has a responsibility to not be giving people this. I mean, it, it might be sensational in the moment, but no, you don't do this kind of thing. That's not responsible. Adults don't do that to other people. Okay. And then let's get over here with the last little thing. She's very concerned about the guns. All right. Now I don't own guns. I don't really know many people who have guns. I certainly wouldn't want to have guns in my presence. I'm in California. It's not a thing here. But I understand it's a big deal in a lot of the other parts of the United States. And she's very concerned about getting the guns back from the police. Okay? I would think that would be low on your priority list of things to ask the dead the dead uh, Josh. I mean, you know... Of, he doesn't want to say who it was who pushed him into this. He doesn't want to give a reason. He doesn't want to do all these other things, but she's, she wants to know about the guns. Okay. So she is in probably in grief. She's just had a bit of a shock. <laughs> I'm a little bit in a shock and uh, that's on her mind. Really? And then she says, um, I, she's worried about it. She's stressed. She used the word stressed over it. Because she has to take a safety course now to get the guns back, which probably is a good idea. Somebody else told me that possibly the reason why she wants the guns back, and I'm just saying, I don't know if this is true or not, is there's a lot of money tied up in those guns. And she needs to sell them to feed herself, to pay for the funeral, to make house payments, to find a new place to live who knows what reason. So maybe the reason why she wants the guns back is because that was a huge investment and she needs that money. I doubt she wants it to remember him by, especially the one he used to shoot himself. Um, and then she said, does, does he have a message for his daughter? So this is, she's, she's not the mother of this child probably. Otherwise she would have said for our daughter. Well, Josh does have a message for her. He says, I love her. That's his message. Doesn't mention her name. Nothing better than that. Like, you know, uh, don't, don't, don't uh, have children with the guy you're with right now. He's a loser. Or make sure you marry uh, this person because they're a winner. Or go back to school and get your degree. You're going to be successful. Or you know, buy stock in some company that's still coming up. I mean, I, I would think that he has some messages for his daughter that could like benefit her in her life, right? Besides, I love you, which is, you know, it's great. Um, One of the things about the I love yous, whenever these mediums give you this message that says, you know, I love you, I'm watching over you, um, I forgive you, or will you forgive me for the way I treated you in the past? Those kinds of things make it very difficult for the grieving um, victim of these people to see that there is nothing there. It's, it's a nothing burger. Can we still use that phrase or is that like passe now? Like there's nothing really there. It's just missed, right? So we, the reason Part of the reason why they do this is because they will not evaluate what it is they've actually heard. Because to do so, you know, at the moment that you're hearing this, he loves me. You know, you start to cry. He's watching over me. He still loves me. And you're crying and it's cathartic and all that. 
and you feel this great sense of relief. He's okay. He's in peace over there. So I've yet to hear somebody say they haven't. They're not in peace over there. But so, so that moment that if they were to come to the realization that this was not true, they were not speaking to their loved one, their loved one did not say what they, what the medium said they said, then it's like losing them, that person again. Because you've invested so much in what the medium has told you. You've cried. You've told your family members. You've probably slept better that night. And now if you find out that it's not true, it's devastating. So it's easier not to look. It's easier not to consider that this might not have been accurate. People who write to me, and they do all the time, and they say, I thought it was real, and now I realize it wasn't. They don't feel elated. They don't feel happy. They are depressed. They're sad. They feel gullible and, and victimized, and, and it's hard for them. It's not a happy feeling to have found out you've been conned or lied to. It's not happy at all. It's a feeling of um, depression. That the per Now, they don't know how the person is doing if they are on the other side. Now, they don't know if they're being loved and watched over. It's, it's, it's difficult. Um, so just to be clear, there is no hot reading going on in here, even though he has their profiles there. It's beyond cold reading. It's, it's like icy, icy cold reading. It's, it's uh, dry ice reading. <laughs> That's a term. Hey, maybe I can just... Um, Take care of that. I don't see what Evelyn's going to be able to do with this reading. She may be able to go and tell her family and friends, you know, I heard from, I heard from Josh. He's doing okay. He says, I'm going to get the guns back. And she probably will if she takes the safety course because Brennan told her to take the safety course so she'd get the guns back. And she'll get him back and say, well, he was right. I got my guns back. I got the guns back, which doesn't make logical sense because he she's anyway she would have gotten them back anyway if she'd taken the course because right um is she gonna go to the police and say it wasn't true he did not kill himself somebody killed him some slender dark-haired man did it that didn't like josh can you look through his phone Look through Josh's phone and emails and messages to see what's, see if there had maybe been a conflict with this other person. Is she going to go to the police with that information? Are they going to laugh in her face and ridicule her? Possibly. I don't know. Um, just depends. I, I don't know what I would say if somebody came to me and said, the medium told me, well, I know what I would say because this is kind of my world. Um but if you, how is her family and friends and her and the her stepdaughter or the daughter of Josh going to look at her when they, she says, I talked to your dad today. He said he loves you. And she'll be like, dad's dead. And she'll say, I know. He told me I'm going to get the guns back. And then somebody killed him. The daughter is going to be like, okay, Evelyn, uh, you're not right, Evelyn. And uh, what are you talking about? You talked to dad today. Okay, so there was a lot in that one. Boy, that was something else. That was that was wild. Absolutely wild. I hope that I get a lot more readings from um, uh, suggestions for John Benner. I have a feeling that uh, we're going to fill up this playlist of uh, other things. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe. Leave me all the comments you want. I'm sure John's going to leave me quite a few comments when he sees this video. From what I understand he's a very unhappy man with people who, criti who uh, critique his readings. Um, I'm sure you know the name of my lawyer or you can look it up if you need be. Um, no problem. <laughs> he wouldn't be the first. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, community. I appreciate that you're here and following me to all the way to the end of the video where I'm just rambling at this point. Subscribe, leave me comments. Send me more, you guys. Send me more.